Hey everybody, my name's Chris Schmitz. Uh, I'm the guy that runs the, the Holy Schmitz blog, uh, HTTP ChristopherSchmitz.blogspot.com. And you're watching this video hoping to find out how to build your own keytar. Um, I had uh, a kid in one of my youth groups, uh, actually youth group I'm with now, I'm pastoring a small, uh, decent sized church actually. Uh, and he told me, he said, I really want to learn how to play the keytar. Some of my favorite bands got guys in the keytar, like uh, Family Force 5. and You've seen some of the other stuff that uh, I built in the past, my wife's bass amp cabinet. People have remarked that if I was a superhero, I'd be Iron Man because I can build just about anything. So I told them I can build you a keytar. So I went about looking, uh, looking at some stuff, how to do it. Found out that you know, most keytars nowadays are almost impossible to get a handle on to, to, to plug into network unless you're I mean, really into your MIDI and you get a lot of MIDI devices and whatnot. But I found this thing uh, by Korg that just came out recently called the, the Nano System, uh, the Nano Series. What I did is I, I just got the Nano Key and the Nano Pad. And to build this key, you're going to want a couple of things. You're going to want a um, you want a, a circular saw. You might want a reciprocating saw too or a sawzall. Uh, you're going to want to drill some spade bits along with some regular drill bits. Uh, uh, small drill bits, probably about an inch and a quarter. Uh, and a three-quarter inch, probably a spade bit on those. Uh, either a Dremel or a router with router bits and some power centers. I use both a, um, a vibrating circulating sander as well as my uh, my belt sander as well. Uh, you want to get the wood of the appropriate size. Make sure that all the items fit on it. That you're you're um, you're going to cut out a body, so you want to draw that body on the wood and make sure that. Your whatever cord devices you put on there, or whatever other devices that you might get, they're all going to fit within the body outline. So, so trace all that on there. You want to screw all of that together. You want to make sure you glue it good too, and clamp it all down. And keep in mind that you're going to have to do uh, those cuts for the body as well. Uh, some different bevels and some cutouts for uh, both your cord things, also the the, the cords. Uh, um, you need to cut some channels in it to, to hide all the cords inside the body. Uh, I put some gussets on there too. Gussets are those little, looks like a little pad that has a whole bunch of really sharp spikes and you pound the whole thing down and that holds it real tight. It's the same thing that they use to hold uh, rafters together. You'll make sure then you sand down the edges after you've got that all cut out. Uh, like I said, I use some good power tools. You'll use some sandpaper to hand sand it later. Uh, and once you've got that all done and it's all, all uh, put together, it's all cut out, sanded down good, you want to use some wood filler. To smooth those things out, you're gonna have to. It's gonna take a lot of wood filler to, to bring all of that up. If you didn't, if you cut the body out of more than one piece, which I did, I used a couple of two by sixes and a two by four. Um, then you want to put some uh, some nails in the back of the body after you you've cut out uh, a place for the cords to, to get wound up inside of there, um, and you cut your groove for for the cords to be hidden. I put. Uh, well, just a couple of ring shank finish type nails in there. Made sure that they're not going to be poking out, so a cover plate will fit over that and hide it nice. And you're going to need those to wind the extra cord length on. Um, find some plastic for the rear cover plate. Uh, you can see that I level out my cuts for the USB hub too, um, and the cord devices with some some mortar and joint compound, which is the same stuff you use for for sheetrock and whatnot. Once you've got all of that done, you can do some final hand sanding. Uh, make sure that's all good and wipe her down and then uh, prime it. I used three or four coats of, of good white primer is what I used on there. Also prime that cover plate. I cut my cover plate out of you know, just a piece of plastic I found around. I found something that would work. An uh, old garbage can lid actually. Once you've got that primed and dried, you're going to want to paint it. And you can see on here that I pre-drilled holes for the cover plate. You want to pre-drill holes on everything that you do for this. Uh, you don't want you don't want that wood to, to chip back on you at all. This is you know finished material, so pre-drill everything. You want to put as many coats of paint as possible, especially when you paint the body, because that's going to absorb a lot of that a lot of that paint. Um, I used five or six coats at least of, of paint once I found the, the color and kind that I liked. Uh, don't go with the super cheap paint, by the way. If you go you go down to Walmart or Target and buy that stuff for 99 cents a can, you're not going to be happy. It's going to look like junk. Uh, finally, do at least five clear coats in, in, before you let it dry. You can find a good uh, in a spray paint type of uh, clear coat to put on there. You probably don't want to brush it on. Make sure that you, you get a good even spray. 
um, and, and you know finally let it let it dry well. Uh, when I affixed my my cord devices in the USB hub, I put Velcro on the back, and it's got that, that sticky Velcro stuff that you can put down. That seemed to work really well. Um, this is kind of a touchy process. You got to make sure that everything fits, and, and you you should have seen maybe that I, I had actually used my spade bits to drill out uh, where the uh, where the USB cord fits onto the the cord devices. I drilled out a spot for that so that. Uh, it all fits in there nice and, and snug, and, and it's all good and hidden, and it looks like it's just like it's built right into that thing. Um, so make sure it all fits good, and that all the cords are tucked away, and then uh, put on the cover plate. And the last step is to pre-drill some holes for your guitar strap, the, the nuts that you put your uh, your guitar strap on, where it holds to your body. I got mine on eBay for it was it was only it was like six or eight bucks, something like that. And, and uh, they, were, they were pretty good quality. And, you know, just snug those nuts up tight, and then it'll be good. So let me show you uh, this thing in action a little bit, and uh, hopefully you can build your own. Enjoy, uh, and check out my check out my website, check out my my blog, and stop by and say hi. Thanks.